as this would be the last part of the entire book, where we'll be covering the final parts of the pieces of the universe. So, let's conclude the book The Theory of Everything. In the Big Bang model, which was formed on the basis of Friedman model of the universe, according to the model, the universe had zero size and was infinitely hot before anything had any existence. It is estimated that the temperature was close to 10 raises to 42 degrees Celsius, and just after the bang, in the interval of few seconds everything changed. The universe fell by billions of degrees in few milliseconds, and as the universe expanded, the energy released was cooling down at an immense rate. The energy particles moved so fast that they escaped all the attraction forces like nuclear force, electromagnetic force. But the temperature falls by the billions, but still the temperature was around trillions of degrees. But now these particles weren't hot enough to escape the nuclear force this time and they started to clump together to form the nuclei atoms of deuterium, or can be called as heavy hydrogen, which eventually turned into helium just by interacting with protons. And all this happened in 100 of a second. After that, for some millions of years, universe kept expanding, without much happening. After cooling by some millions of degrees, it gave rise to atoms, where they later fused together by binary motion, which gave the spinning and rotational motion to every known body in the universe. As time went on, all these gases in the galaxies would break up into smaller clouds that would collapse under their own gravity. This collapse of the atoms and particles will create heat and would start nuclear reactions. This immense heat will convert helium into heavier elements like carbon and oxygen. Quite similar things happens with other clouds as well, which give rise to planets like Earth and such. This theory was widely accepted, but also gave rise to many questions as well. Like, why was early universe so hot? Why it looks the same in all direction? Why didn't the universe recollapse? What was the origin of these density fluctuations? Some remained unanswered, but some were answered. There could be multiple big bangs in the universe, where the expansion and the collapse kept happening again and again, until the right amount of energy, rate of expansion was just right configuration for this universe to become what it is today. As said in the previous part that, in order to understand how universe started, it is important to understand how quantum mechanics and classical theory works. According to the space-time theory, there could be only two possible ways the universe can behave. Either it has existed for an infinite time, or else it had a beginning at some finite time in the past. But even if an answer is discovered for this question, it doesn't give answer to how the current universe was formed. But the quantum theory does give an answer partially. It does say that time and space together formed a surface that was infinite in size, but it did not have any boundary or edge. But any model that described the whole universe in detail would be much too complicated mathematically for us to be able to calculate exact predictions. It would be very difficult to construct a complete unified theory of everything all at one go. So instead we have made progress by finding partial theories. Theories like general relativity, theory of gravity, particle theory for electromagnetic force, based on quantum mechanics, classical theory, etc. Because of this, there was a change of opinion in favor of what are called as string theories. Here the particle has only one dimension, which is length, like an infinitely thin loop of string. Here the string, or call line wraps around space-time. It means the entire line occupies space at each moment of time. What we previously thought as a particle are now pictured as waves traveling down the string like waves on a washing line. This string theory describes how these strings propagate through space and interact with each other. String theory potentially provides a unified description of gravity and particle physics. It is a candidate for a theory of everything a self-contained mathematical model that describes all fundamental forces and forms of matter. String theory still has several problems that must be resolved before it can be acclaimed as the ultimate unified theory of physics. Yet it is to be known what extent string theory describes the real world or how much freedom the theory allows in the choice of its details. But it is certain that these questions will be answered in time. We just need to widen our space of thinking and believe in our space-time journey.